confusion and we receive the Holy Spirit who loves us and guide us and who has made us. So I speak blessing from heaven, the authority of God upon your life. Being able to receive and being able to grow is the will of God for you. Mm -hmm. God has good for your life. That's right. Thank you, Father, in the context of the anointed word of God, the truth of God that has made us free. I decree freedom for everybody in this room. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. And we just speak this right now in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Now say this. This is my Bible. I am what the word says I am. And I have what the word of God says I have. And I certainly can do what the word says I can do. Today I'm going to learn because my mind is alert. My heart is fertile, My heart is fertile. And, I and I desire to learn. Therefore, I will learn. I, will learn. I, refuse to be the same. I refuse to be the same. I'll never be the same, I will never be the same. as a result of God's word. Thank you, Lord. I'll never be the same. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to welcome everybody that is streaming with us. We got really a dynamic word for you today, and it's going to set you free, have you walking in God's victory. We started last week, and so let me set the stage on this. We're talking about a, a statement that is coming out of the Bible, and in that it says, all things are under my foot. And that simply denotes that it's like things that go on that'll get in your life, mess your life up. Have anybody had something happen where one day just mess your stuff up? Have you all off? You talking about, man, I'm, what is this going on? Well, there's a certain way that we live according to the word, and all of the natural things that can pop up in my life, we have it under our foot. Yes, Lord. According to the word of God, these things are supposed to be under the jurisdiction of what we say, the word of God. And so that's what we're working with today, that as a believer, just like Jesus made it possible for you, all things are under your foot. Now, let's take a look at, let's start here with something real powerful. Now, this belongs to all of us. Say, this belongs to all of us. It's just like when you go to a smorgasbord, there are some things you want to eat and some things you don't want to eat. And unfortunately, people will come into the, the word environment and they're picking and choosing what they can receive or based on what they understand or what they may have heard or may not have heard. You want to let your spirit man receive it all. He the processing center. He know what you need. So here, let's take a look at this, this truth. All things are under your foot. Like you say, like we say, that's behind me. Ain't nobody going to stop me. Nobody's going to block me. Oh, I'm not doing that no more. No, he ain't coming over here no more. And so that means you've made a stand against something that was uh, interfering with the flow of your life. So we're not having that. Anybody with me on that? Amen. Ephesians 1. Everybody, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And verse 19 is where we're going to start. I mean, this whole thing, now, the first service, I didn't, I didn't get real far on that because this whole letter is just a powerful letter dealing with faith. And we're talking about, everybody say it with me, all things, all things are, under my feet. are under my feet. And what is that all things? Listen, circumstances, situations, accidents, mishaps, conditions of life, all these things are under your foot. I said it this morning. Like, in, like I know, uh, like in, in Britain, they'll go like this. This is just your lot in life. So it's like right now, everybody have a, have a uh, like a, you know, everybody know what a dice is? Yes. Like a Monopoly dice with different numbers. So everybody have, a, have your name on it, and it has a position in life for you. So we put it in a big bucket and shake it, and you pick it up, so you ought to be satisfied. That's your lot in life. I'm not receiving that. Amen. I said, I'm not receiving that. Now, watch this. Uh, soundly, your life is going to be a little bit different from somebody that took the place to go to college, okay, or somebody started a business. You can't go to the businessman business and expect to get his money. He created a business. Well, he just like me. All of that is bad talk. Don't be envying. That's going to get you into envy and jealousy and falsehood. You're not going to get nothing on that. I'm like this. If everybody else is serving in the church, why are you serving? You ain't no king. Or, you know, we're not no king in the sense that we removed from it. If you're a part of the church, you do what everybody's doing. Amen. And everything, the, the reason I set these things up so we can get it and all grow together. You can't grow together if you think you're above somebody. Wow. You know, you have to get in, use your faith, dealing with the situation you have, and get some things done. 
Don't we want God to bless us? We want God to bless us, bless our family. We did it. But we, it's almost to the point where people, you don't want to make no effort in the relationship. You want everything to go your way without you make it. That ain't real. Do you hear me? That ain't real talk. So what I say to you, say to the Lord, Lord, created me a clean heart and a right spirit. Because your heart and your spirit ain't right. You, you, you want to obtain something without using your faith to obtain it. Same page? All right, so now this is what I want everybody to do. In Ephesians 1, Ephesians 1, you all with me? In Ephesians 1, I'm going to start at verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of him. That's a powerful stuff. He says that the Father has granted to you uh, and has given you, he, he says, given you the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of him. Verse 18, the eyes of your understanding. Everybody look at me. You have a natural understanding, you got a spiritual understanding. The natural understanding is selfish. Everything to my convenience. The spiritual understanding, I'm going to do what the words say do. Because he's granted me, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's my spiritual understanding. Same page? Okay, so take a look. So take a look. So take a look. So where are we at? Uh, <clears throat> The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of his glory and of the inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness? Everybody say exceeding greatness. Exceeding. That's powerful. The exceed, not just regular great, the exceeding greatness. The exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead when he worked in Christ when he did what raised, raised him from the dead that he might that that he is that he sitted at the right hand in heavenly places and and that that heavenly place is a very important thing because whatever we bind on earth is bound where in heaven so whatever is bound on earth is also bound where and that's Matthew 16 and 18. Whatever is bound on earth is also bound where? In heaven. So that means I have the ability to speak what the words say, and then I what? Have what I say. When I speak the word, what happens? Have what I say. When I speak the word, what happens? I have what I say. Now hold your Bible up. This is a book of promises. This is a book of relationship where you get an opportunity to know God. God loves everybody in this room, but there has to be some level of cooperation. You can't go to no job and do what you want to do. There's some levels of cooperation. And so for us to understand, when you learn to cooperate with that word, that's when you come up. So, so what I do in my life, I don't do anything that's in conflict or a violation of what the scripture has told me to do. Same page? Okay, now let's go in some more. This is a powerful, powerful letter to us, the believer. <clears throat> and so, uh, so he says in verse 20 again, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at the right hand in heavenly places, meaning our ability. He's in, he has established himself on the throne, and because we are, watch this, we are children of God, heirs of God, join heirs with Christ. Say it, I'm a child of God, a child of God. Heir, of God, heir of God, and a joint heir with Christ. When you got born again, that was God's alliance to your life. He's, he's giving you that position that we're children of God, heirs of God and we're joint heir with Christ to be a joint heir with Christ that means levels of dominion and authority has been given to you so that you can speak this word it'll happen like we, we commonly say 2 Timothy 2 24 by our stripes we're what yeah. we're healed being healed is not the, just the absence of pain in my body but it's a spiritual position that God has put us all in and so I live that way uh, anything that is abnormal anything that's not lined up with healing I know that it shouldn't be in my body or, and so I speak to it. I don't tolerate it. You know, how do you tolerate it? You've been having pain for a couple of days, so you just buy some medicine and just hope it's going to go away. No, I, I'm speaking to that. I'm speaking to that. Watch this. How could the medicine be above what God say? He created the medicine. Think, think how, everybody listen to me. Think how people think. Well, if I just get this prescription, I'm going to be cool. Well, think about who made the prescription. Who made the medicine? Who made the earth? So the word of God is above you know, learning how to comply with things that I need in my body. Speaking the word of God is everything. 
So what do you got to do? It's a discipline because your soul don't feel like it. Every day, every day you rise up, I'm speaking. Every day I rise up, what I'm doing? I'm speaking. Every day I rise up, I'm speaking what my father has promised concerning my life. See, it's, a, it's, a, it's something just to be here listening, but some people got in here listening and be doing this stuff. And then their life pool starts spiraling into success. If you don't be a doer of it, you're not going to get the benefit from it. All right, right now, tell me three things for breakfast that people commonly eat. Eggs. What else? Well, well eggs is one. What, what's the next most? Oh, no, no, some meat. I'm not having no breakfast, just no eggs, man. You know, like, baby, I'm going to make some breakfast. I got some eggs. Now, you keep the eggs. I want some sausage, some bacon, you know, some, and a piece of toast. I want to, you know, if we're going to do, let's do breakfast. Just make anything. No. So when it comes to the word of God, the word of God has everything that you need for life. But you've got to buy into it. You say it and you say it and you say it and you say it. God created the heaven and earth. He said, let's make man like us. He spoke it. Then we came in dominion and authority with God. He said, let's make man in our likeness and our image. And I'm going to give him dominion. Let there be light. And there was. So everything that is written, we're designed to say it. It's been a promise, we say it. It's been promised to us, we say it. You say it and you do it, you do it and you say it, and then you'll begin to see that life is just not limited to this natural world, but I can actually get into heavenly places and have the Father who promised everything. Titus said he promised this before time began. It's a beautiful thing through faith to start living this out in your life. It's not a game. It's not just one scripture. You it's a lifestyle. Uh, Romans 1.17 say to just shall live how? By faith. It's a lifestyle. The stuff I'm teaching you is the, the things that are incorporated with a lifestyle of faith. You get it, the failure is over. Mm. Yo, everybody going to get their faith tested, but you're going to still win. Uh, sometimes you've seen a movie and the person say in the movie, don't make me get up. What that mean, y'all? What that mean? What a mama say, don't make, now don't make me have to come over there. What that mean, y'all? Have, you know, I'm not talking about no child abuse, but, you know, it's like, but just sometimes a parent got to say, you know, because kids, they just go. They going, ah, it's like when you're trying to sleep, they, ah, ah, ah. Now, look, I done told you to sit down. Ah, don't make me get up. And it's something click. Okay, I, I'm stopping now. They stop in the middle of a, they just stop up. So, watch this. All things under our feet are this whole thing about this world system that is designed to make us be in compliance with the world. Well, I can't do this. Well, I can't do that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My doing is not determined on what looks like negativity or doubt. And so here, verse 21, for this is Jesus uh, who now has been set at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. If he's in heavenly places, I have the ability to speak into heavenly places because of the royalty that I have. Uh, keep your finger right there. Go to Romans uh, 8, everybody. Go to Romans 8 real quick. I want to show you something because I think you need to know who you are. I'm going to tell you your driver's license number, your birthday, who you really are. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want. Romans 8. I want to show you a couple of things. Tell, can I get somebody, if it's somebody you've never seen before, I don't care who it is, we're in, we're in the house of God, we all family, tell somebody around you, and I mean not no little play stuff, tell them, you coming up in the Lord. Coming up in the Lord, you're coming up. You coming up, wobblehead. what I say? Up, up, up. All right, now watch this. Watch this, everybody. Romans, Romans, Romans 8. I want to show y'all something. This is about you. That's why I say you coming up. I'm talking about you. It say this. This is Romans 8 and uh, 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. So God is not giving us no spirit of bondage. You know, like if I do that, man, you're going to have me in bondage. No, God ain't putting you in no bondage. But God has, for you did not receive the, the spirit of bondage again to fear but you received a spirit of adoption by whom we cry what? Abba, Father. The spirit himself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We are the? Children We are the? Children We are the? Children now look at me. Just because you're children of God, you still got to work the word. It's a lot of children all over the place on Sunday. They're not working word. They're just having a religious 
meeting. Religious meetings don't prove my people to be successful when there's attacks, when there's finances, with the things that we got to do like everybody else do. Uh, we do what everybody else do in the spirit of excellence, and God elevates us above everybody else, above the natural, not just competing. We're not competing with people. We're competing with this world system that tries to tell us that the devil is a thief who come to rob, kill, and destroy. Say this out your own spirit. You ain't stealing from me no more. And I'm not going to allow you to steal. Now listen to me. The way you do that is through the word. When you get in the word, he can't come and just mess your stuff up no more. All of a sudden, you know, y'all about to have a nice day and, when, and somebody in the house just going to start acting a fool. That bring the whole house down. I'm going like, man, why can't you just sit down and calm down? Yeah. Ah, just go, just go. <laughs> Not buying that. It could be the husband. It could be the husband or the wife, just a fool. So when you see, watch this. I said it this morning. I want everybody to get this revelation. Sometimes when you get to a place where now you are prospering and you see the word working, that, don't, that you ain't rich, you ain't got there yet because sometimes there's some people you got to bring along. Amen. They refuse to go your way. They want to do their thing. And they ain't successful in it, but they hang on to it because that's all they got. So they just, you're going like, when, when is this fool going to wake up? It's like he living his life and he got like a fortress. Okay, here's a gate. Then there's an armor gate, then a tall wall. You can't even get in. Even you're praying, the prayers can't get in because he got it blocked. His mind, his soul is so locked to failure. His way, because that's all he know. He ain't trust God yet. Got to trust the Lord. Got to tr I said, got to trust the Lord. Uh, uh, Solomon said that in Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and all your ways. Now, see, it's easy to say, but how many times I see you at Bible study? Are you acknowledging him? You're paying them tithes. Am I acknowledging? So it's not, none of this stuff is just cliche. It's making a statement. Are you doing what you're saying? So back to Solomon. Trust in the Lord, not your bills, your money, or your hairdo. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Watch this. Everybody in here, I grant you, trust God to some degree. But it might be so infantile that it really ain't moving the monitor at all. You trusting out of a third grade mentality. No, you got to be able to trust where you ready to lay your life down if you said lay it down. Amen. Think of everybody look at me. Tell me, ladies of God. Yes. I usually call y'all dudes too because your spirit is, a gen is no gender. Your spirit ain't got no gender. Where's, where's uh, uh, there she is. I said, dude, did you get it? I wasn't talking to her. Immature person, you so immature, you thinking I'm talking. I know she's a woman, but I'm talking to her spirit. I'm not trying to be apologetic. I got to get things done because I'm dealing with life and death just about every day. If, 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 you know, just, the, just hearing what people go through would frighten you to death. And so I'm saying like, dude, didn't you get it? I get it. She understand. And we get it. We win. We move on. We're not going to stop at silly. And so the bottom line is every one of us have since we've been born again, we are now children of God. It don't stop. Well, I'm a child of God, but look how you're living. I'm a child of God, and then we're heirs of Christ. Everything that the Spirit has granted to him is now granted to you. And we're joint heirs with him. Man, that's powerful. Look at this in Romans. Let me, let me show you this so we go back. In verse 15, for we did not receive this, the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we received the spirit of, of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit bear witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. My spirit, God's spirit, bear witness with your spirit. You are a child of God. And if you're, an heir, if you're a child, then you're an heir, everything he promised. And then you're a joint heir with all the authority of Christ that he had. Remember, it's the authority of Christ, the anointed spirit of God that rose Jesus from the dead. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Indeed, if we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And that, that's just a picture of you. Everybody got me on that? That's a beautiful thing. Go to 2 second, uh, uh, second Corinthians real quick here. I just want to show you because you're the most blessed thing in the universe. Yeah, y'all are. Y'all are the most blessed people in the universe. It's not because what we say is because what he promised. I 
I just wanted to share this verse with you uh, again just a description okay a description of who you are and uh, uh, 2 Corinthians that describes that you are a royal priesthood you're a royal priest a holy nation is that 2 Corinthians 5 no it's not Okay, I wanted to show that. I wanted to read that, but I, I can't find it right now. Second Corinthians. Oh, first Peter. First Peter. I'm in Corinthians. Go to first Peter. It took you long enough. First Peter, chapter two and verse nine. No, it's not. No, first Peter two and nine. Oh, first Peter two nine. I was trying to find third Peter. <laughs> okay, all right, now, the, here again is a description of who you are. Uh, First Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen generation. So you are living in a generation that God has chosen, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that he may proclaim the praises of him who called you from darkness into his most marvelous light. Watch this, this is where we was, who once were not a people, but now the people of God who did not obtain mercy, but now who have obtained mercy. So that's us. We are heirs of God. We're uh, children of God, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. We're a royal priesthood. We're a holy nation. All this is absolutely true. So now we're in the mode of just learning how to walk in these benefits. Now, I want to say this to everybody as we just read that this is what the enemy tries to do. Uh, go back over to Ephesians. Go to Ephesians 1.22 one more time. The enemy want to lie to you. Have anybody ever been lied to before? You know, we've all been lied to, and that's what he wants to do in, the, in the, the course of life is just constantly lie to us. But I just rebuke all his lies. Now go back to first uh, Ephesians 1.22. And it says, and he has put all things under his feet, and he has given him to be head over all things to the church. Now we are the church. The people are the church. This is a building but we are the church that Jesus gave his life for. Everybody with me on that? And he has put all things under your foot and he, to be head over all things, which he, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills us all in all. So this is us right here. Jesus got all things under his foot, we do. How do we keep the world situations, accidents under our feet with the word of God that we obey and say? Say the word, the word. that I obey. And I say, and I say obey, obey and say. And say. So when you have the word, you speak the word, you obey the word, and you say the word. You say the word, you obey the word, you obey the word, you say it. Now I'm in a mode of having these scriptures come alive in my daily walk. And so these are just some simple things that the enemy always try to do, like sickness. He'll try to lie to you about sickness. Is sickness a lie? Yes, yes it is. Disease? Yes. Poverty? Yes. Lack? Fear, yes. defeatism. Yes. A person, when you encounter the spirit of defeatism, they always be going like, it's like, we'll never make it. It's too hard. They run out of them. You can't order it no more. It's, so it's a mentality. The people don't mean anything, but they just adapt to the spirit. So everybody watches. You got to block defeatism. Defeatism have you negative. It, it won't let you see the possibilities of God. God said, well, man, things are impossible with man with defeatism but with God all things are possible with God what all things are possible. don't never give up keep speaking the word with God what all things are possible. you could be the last application they say we ain't taking it no more but they end up saying well, we just gonna take that one more why because all things are possible through who through God listen to this don't never go nowhere don't do anything without praying Amen. even when you go into the theater pray Amen. you you you're gonna be the one where God will keep somebody coming there shooting up the whole movie theater I don't go nowhere. Lead me not into temptation. Deliver me from all evil. Why does that work? Because I have a relationship with God. Learning how to repeat that, it don't work. If you have a relationship with God, it works. The Lord has not led us into temptation. And he delivered us from what? All evil. 
which simply means in the scripture in Matthew 6 and 13, the evil one, the devil, is the origins of how these things get loose. I'm not receiving it. I'm not receiving nothing that ain't of God. All y'all the children of God, but are you ready to comply? All right, everybody listen. I'm giving instructions. I want all y'all to be at home before the street light hit. So it's your, your responsibility to find out what time, the, what time the street light come on. Well, whatever it is, if, you ain't, if the street light on, you ain't in the house. Consequences. Is that consequences? So, man, it's like a certain time in the neighborhood, everybody's sprinting to the house. They, everybody getting to the house. Why? Because mom say, be home before what? I said, don't let that street light catch you again. <laughs> People be, they be like. Because <laughs> mom ain't playing. She waiting till y'all to get, get towed up. So anyway, I'm just simply talking about how to live in compliance with the word of God. So Jesus, heir of everything and sickness, disease. Uh, Jesus has made us. Now we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ and we're above this. That's what means Everything is under our foot. So anything that could pop up that's not a part of the will of God, we're supposed to keep it under our foot with obeying the word and speaking the word and knowing the promise that has been granted to us. So defeatism and just a lack of knowledge. Hosea said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Uh, Isaiah, the prophet in verse 5, 13, he says, my people have been taken into bondage or captivity because they lack knowledge. So in other words, without the knowledge of the word of God, you're going to begin to modify your life to work with not having truth. Now, uh, John said this in St. John 8 and 44. He says, the devil is a liar from the beginning. Mm -hmm. That boy's an expert in the lie. Man, the devil will get you up in the morning and tell you about 13, 14 lies before you start the day. The minute that fool try to say something to you, he'll put a thought. You know what? It's going to be cold today. Watch out. The boogeyman is out, you know. And you'll just, you'll listen to that. And, you, and then just when you listen to it, Satan timed it, the news came on. Watch out, it's a new flu called the boogeyman. <laughs> and now you're at the house. Baby, we can't do it. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Everybody said, we can do. I can do. You can do. All things through Christ. Stop. Now, y'all somewhere away from the church. Well, who is Christ? Jesus, no, that's not Jesus. That's the spirit, the spirit of Messiah. So you got to come here and get these FMs. Christ is an anointed one. Right. They called him Jesus the Christ. And some people think that was his first and last name. Mm -hmm. It was a spirit that he walked in. Yes. Is there a spirit of faith? Yes. Is, is anybody strong? Yes. That's a spirit. It's like it's a, it's a nature that in here we know that we can straight do all things through Christ who strengthens us through this word of God. So you might have been able to get us a year ago, but you can't get the people no more. We ain't falling for religion. This thing worked for anybody who believed. Jesus said, whosoever what? Believe. So now watch this. As a mother, speak over your husband. Speak over your children. It's not one side. I said it in first service. It's not I'm the wife. You do everything. You the high priest. No, the wife got to do something too. I ain't got not one amen. See, so y'all tripping. At least your brother should say amen. Yes, sir. Yes. The, the man can't do everything. And the woman can't. It's a cooperation. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I got the babies. Well, you know what, babe? Look. Handle it. <laughs> Handle it. What mothers, you ever see mothers? A, a woman is like, you know, it's like, they'll have all this stuff in there and have a baby wrapped up. And, yeah. and they be rolling. <laughs> they'll grab one, cut, grab them, and you think they're about to break them. They know how to grab them like a monkey or something. Just grab them. <laughs> Have them all wrapped up and grab their stuff. So you got babies handle it. You can do it. We can do all through who? Christ. Christ, who strengthens us. See, it's a spirit of Christ that the anointing is on you. You get people, you get people on faith, them the wrong ones to mess with. Like they begin to respect the promise of the word of God, and you'll see that the things that you can, what you said you couldn't do, start diminishing right before you. We're not receiving no sickness, no disease. Let that devil lie to somebody else. Write it down to St. John 8 and 44. The Bible says he's a liar, not yesterday, from the beginning. So if you got dreams, ambitions to do things, through the word of God, you can get it done. 
the real you coming out. Amen. The best you coming out. Amen. Don't hide. Just come on out. And everybody right here, this is something that I said this morning. Start saying, Lord, create in me a clean heart and a right spirit. Because what is our tendency? Man, that, they tripping up. Ooh, right? Ooh, for real? Ooh. Uh-uh. Lord, create in me a clean heart. And, and sometimes, watch this, don't nobody say that. Everybody looks straight ahead so nobody know you said it before. Well, if I had him in my life, everything, no, you have him, you're going to have twice the headache. If I had her, everything going to be straight. No, you're going to have twice the headache. Be thankful who, what God has given you. And pray for the Lord to give you what, you, what God wants you to have. Now, I just, I'm just going to pick the Lord so I have a choice. Mm -mm. You be at the altar every Friday. <laughs> so Christians, here we go. We, we're not going to stand for no lies. And remember here, I want to say this. Like in St. John, in the same book, John, John is like really powerful. And he says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Everybody look at me. Here's a, a, a rendition. And you shall know the word, and the word will make you true or free. The word make you free. You shall know the word, and the word shall what? in every area of our lives so we're not we're not receiving nothing bad nothing down we're going up anybody with me yes. which way are you going uh. up that's the only way we're going now check this out uh <clears throat> i wanted to talk about like that whole concept of having everything under your foot and i've kind of talked about that which means no one or nothing is going to block what god has promised for me no one it's the year of harvest for me Nothing or nothing, no one or nothing is going to block what God has promised. Can I get you to say that? Say it again. Nothing or no one. So we, in other words, we got our feet on that. And like God has made Christ and he's put everything on his feet. Because people can get on your nerve, kids, everybody can get on your nerve. And then you ain't going to handle more nerves. So I'll just walk by faith and not by nerves. That irritation to have you way up there. So, everybody, say this again with me. Uh, nothing nothing. Or, no one or no one will block what God has promised me. Promised me. I, I'm, I'm going to get what God promised me. No, no, no. I have what God has promised me. Now, that's faith. So, this is the year of harvest for you. Now, now sow that seed in somebody and sow it. This is the year of harvest for you. This is the year of harvest for you. This is the year of harvest for you. This is the year of harvest. This is the year of harvest. Come on, Teresa, with your, your blessed self. This is the year of harvest. This is the year of harvest. Where get her? This is the year of harvest. Tell her. <laughs> this is the year of harvest. Come on. This is the, what is this? So everybody get that. Now, <clears throat> all things under your foot simply denote faith and power that's above the world system. That's all it means. Under my foot. Uh, it simply means things, all things under my foot, it denotes that by faith and power, I'm above this world system to dictate to me. God say with man, things are impossible. In Matthews, he say with man, things are possible. With God, all things are possible. So now you all are learning how to live on the other side. I live on the island of possibility, not impossibility. And that's, that's denoting having things under our feet. Watch this. Because of the finished work of Jesus. Somebody tell me right now, when did Jesus finish all the works? When was all his works in this earth done? When he gave his life, everything was finished. When he gave his life, it was the finished works of Jesus. Remember when he was on the cross, there was three people up there. Jesus was up there with two other people. And this is what he said. This is what he said. Uh, he said, uh, the guy said, man, I, I know I, what I have done is wrong. I deserve to be up here. He said, when you get to your father's paradise, I heard you talking about it. Can I go with you? He said, this day you shall be in paradise. But you know what that man did? He confessed. He seen that his natural man was not right. So he seen something different. He got a revelation of God. He said, you know what? You are a good man. And what you're talking about is real. And I know you don't supposed to be up on this cross with me. I know what I done did. I told some stuff up. 
He said, I know I'm supposed to be dead today, but for you, you don't deserve to be up here. He said, when you get to your father's house, can I be with you? He said, today you're going to be with me in paradise. Yes. And when Jesus gave up his spirit, that is called the finished works of the complete works of Jesus. That death completed everything. And so that way today, we have what we call the all-inclusive benefits of salvation. Raise up your Bible. They in here. That's why we work Bible in here. Because every promise is healing in here. Yes. By a strife, we what? Heal. If you come from the poverty, from the hood and the back of the hood, all the way back there, down there, down there to the last part. Watch this. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 says, Christ became poor that you can now be what? Rich. That doesn't mean something going to fall out of the sky. That means now, through the word of God, God will first give you the right mentality. Amen. If you got a poor mentality, you're going to stay poor. Yes. Ain't nothing poor up in here. Poor and poverty is a mentality. It's not have and have not. It's a mentality. So a lot of people started with not nothing, but we eating good today. Yes. Yes. And tomorrow. Yes. And the next day. Yes. So it's crucial for us to understand what Paul was talking about. He says, in the word, in Christ, everything that you was tripping about now is under your foot. You in control. Amen. The best you is in control. Give me three ladies, raise your hand. Put your Bibles down. Give me three ladies, raise your hand. Because some of you know, life itself, going through things can be rough. All right, can I, can, can I, y'all, can, can y'all turn me loose? Let me talk a little bit. Yes. Can we talk? Yes. I said, can we talk? Yes. Let me tell you something. If you're a woman of God, you don't need no dude. You need God. Yes. You hear what I said, Teresa? Don't look at me like with all that blue on. Yes. <laughs> the thing is, that, that whole concept, if I get a man, my problems are over. If you get the Lord, all your, your situation is straight. First, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things will be added. It's not I got to do it. Everything is cool. Please, I'm not waiting on no losing. Generally, people are going to do what they've been trained to do. If you're a loser, you're going to lose. You, you, it's just a part of the makeup of our system. But y'all raise your hand. You know what everybody did was wise enough to raise your hand. When I said it, long life, good life, and healing, this is the year of harvest. Raise your hand, Teresa. This is the year of harvest for you. See, Teresa, Teresa, she like, like this. Dude come knocking on the door talking about, hey, can we talk? Man, look, Teresa ain't looking for nothing with no cane or nothing like that. She said, I got to talk to my pastor. <laughs> but healing to all of y'all in Jesus' name. Put your hands down. All right, so look, look, y'all, look. So the finished works of Jesus that happened on the cross, he's given us authority to keep the word. He's given us the authority over the enemy and have under th all things under our foot. So the words that are promised in the scripture have been denoted for you to succeed. I got three things I want to share with you because uh, now it was a time when a bill come, you would panic because you may not have enough in your account. And if you start using the pay the bill, it's going to alter the other things in your life. So you start saying, well, what, what can I cut? I ain't, we not cutting nothing these days. I said, ain't nothing getting cut off. <laughs> nothing cut off, nothing, none of that. That is not designed for God. So that means when situations will occur and arise in our lives that is not lined up with the promise, we speak with the promise, say, don't speak what it looked like or what I feel or what I think. Amen. Speak what the word say, speak what the word say. When you speak what your words say, it releases God himself into the equation of the situation you're dealing with. And God say this, everybody, everybody, every, every person in here, God loves us equally. But some get more benefits because we just obedient children. You just be obedient, do what you're supposed to do. You're going to come up and nobody can stop you. Isn't that beautiful? So what I want you to see here is this. Go to Psalms. This is powerful. Because right now, your, your level of confidence and faith is going to go. Go to Psalms 8. Your level of confidence and faith going up today. Some, you know, all you rich people sitting in here like that. Ain't nobody broke. Nobody sick. Nobody defeated. We definitely not ignorant of his word. The scripture I'm reading, David was saying this before it became a new... Testament scripture. In fact, in the New Testament, the men of God were simply quoting this and it was documented in the old and the new. And it's an, what is called an established truth. Now, in, the, in Psalms 8, are you all with me, children? Yes. Psalms 8 and 5. What did I say? Psalms 8 and 5. 
Psalms 8 and 5. And it says, for you have made him, and it's talking about Jesus. For you have made him a little lower than an angel. You have crowned him with glory and honor. Why? Because what he did in this earth realm for you. For you have, uh, <clears throat> for you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. So God has made things available. All the things in this earth are the works of God's hand. And you happen to be his children. You have put all things, you have put all things under his feet. So I want you to say under, him, under his feet if it's true. No, 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 no. When I, l listen to me. Say under his feet. When I tell you to, when, when it's appropriate to say it. Sickness and disease. Poverty and lack. Just craziness in the house. Everybody stop, look at me. No room for jealousy. There it is. No room for jealousy. You cannot be micromanaging your husband. Where you going? Uh, what, his, his wife name, where you, where you going? Let me see your phone. Man, there ain't no time for all that. Who are you talking to? They need Jesus. What are you doing? Where, where are you going? Who are you talking to? Who? <laughs> no. Y'all supposed to say. All things are under his feet. And so everybody got to everybody see that. Look and verse five again. You have made him a little lower than an angel. You've crowned him with with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hand. You have put all things under his feet. So all these circumstantial things go to Hebrews. Paul is saying go to Hebrews chapter two. Go. Paul is saying the same thing. Everything is under his feet. Some extra bills. Somebody talking crazy. Everybody stop. Stop and look at me. Just because somebody tripping, you ain't got to trip neither. Some, of you, some people going to jail in a McDonald's line ordering a sandwich. How in the world are you going to be fussing and using bad language with somebody on a microphone? Now, I said, I want mine easy over. Don't make me have to get out this car. You know, the next thing you know, you're, you're wondering why all the cars moving out of the way. Come on, man. More, more confidence in the, in the authority of Christ. Just because somebody want to be a fool, you ain't got to go with them. Are you with me? Yes. And everybody look at me. Say hi to everybody. Amen. That's sometimes we just, just waiting for somebody. No. Anybody get in your presence, open your mouth. Let your spirit speak. Amen. Good evening, ma'am. Hi. That's, that's like our royal ambassadors. Like uh, Jared and Daniel, a lot of these guys grew up and they, they learn how to have levels of etiquette when it comes to women. You open the doors and you just say hi. You don't have to be in front. Now, these days, I, that happened to me. You open the door for a person not even thinking. They say, I got my own door. I said, well, you can have it. <laughs> and you act like you're about to get violent. <laughs> open the door yourself. But respecting people, say respect people. That's why in the church, I simply have you to do it. Get in the habit of doing what you should be doing out on them streets. Hi. And don't be saying it to be strifeful. You know, sometimes people can be, you know, you tripping because you think they tripping and you just get up and hi. <laughs> no, that ain't it. That ain't it. No, that's not it. Is that it? But do some people go there? Yeah. Don't do that, Marilyn. Don't do it no more. <laughs> no, just be kind, everybody. Just be kind, because ain't no way in the world you're going to tell me Jesus is in you and you acting like, you know, you lost. You say hi to everybody. You respect everybody. Amen. Anybody come by you, good evening, good afternoon. Sometimes I get evening and morning mixed up. I'll be saying good morning, it'll be evening. But at least I said something. And, and, and so here I'm giving you an environment how the love of, of truth works. If love is in you, love is not word, it is action. Yeah. Speaking it and, and going out of your way to, to, to not allow your, the soul itself to be so stubborn in control. Because it, it's been time like, I don't like to hang out with people. I just like to be by myself. That's insecurity. Don't you know every time you come into the healing environment, some healing get on you. Yeah. Every time you're in an environment where there's truth, there's something happens on your inside and to your flesh. 
So no, we want to be, we want to be amongst people that are speaking faith and truth. He said, those in the household of faith and patience have obtained the promise. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. So I, tur I, I want everybody to go to Hebrews. I got stopped on the way. Go to Hebrews chapter two, everybody. All things under your feet. And all your bills are paid. In full. It's a beautiful thing to have the money and don't have to spend it. When, like, it's like when you're in that wrong spirit, you spend everything you got. You already got cabinet worth of food and you just like, well, let me go back. They said they got a sale. I can get nine for 19, but 10, 10, 10 they got nine. I'm going to eat a couple and freeze about five of them. No, let all that go, man. Because when you're freezing all that food, you forget what you got. And then when you go back to get it, it's looking at you. <laughs> eat me if you want to. <laughs> I've been in there so long, I'm going to kill you when I get in your stomach. Uh-uh. So children, children, here it is again. Just denoting the fact. This is Hebrews 2 and 7. Can I get everybody to go there? Uh -huh. and, and verse 7, I'll just start there. And he says, you have made him a little lower than the angels. That's the same thing that we're quoting in Psalms by David. You have crowned him with glory and honor. You have set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his foot and subject under his foot. So that means it's subject. That means everything. Listen, everything is subject to change. Everything is subject to change. Everything natural is subject to change. With you Christians, it might look like that word, but it'll change. You got to stay with the word. Stay with the word. Stay with the word. There was a woman came one time. She said, Pastor, I just really need your prayer because I'm going to be away for a while. I did something and I got to go to court. And, uh, you know, and I, I know I'm going to have to be away. I'm going to have to do a little time. And the spirit just said, God going to show this girl mercy. She wasn't in here and learn how to walk by faith. So God said, I'm going to show her mercy. And so I told her, is that, I said, I know you did what you did. I don't need to know all of it. It'd be too long telling me. But let me just tell you, God going to give you mercy. But this is one thing you're going to have to do. When I pray and you go there and you get mercy, you got to keep yourself in the word. If you don't come in the word, they're going to come find you. Yes, she was in there coming here crying. I didn't have to go. They couldn't find my, I wasn't on the docket, whatever that means. I wasn't on the docket and they couldn't find it. And they told me just to go home. I didn't see her for the next six months. She got free, but she wasn't free in the Lord. Yes. So she got free from going to jail, but she didn't have a mentality that she need what y'all need, what we need, what I need, what you need. Are you with me? Poor girl, next thing you know, I got a call. They came to my house and got me. I told you they were going to do that. God then freed you, and now you're going to spit in his face. I don't need church. I don't need church. I don't need it. I got to wash my clothes. You can burn them clothes. I ain't trying to, you, I, you don't want to be in that place. Who want to be hooked up? You want to get, who want to get hooked up? No. I ain't trying to get hooked up. You want to get hooked up? <laughs> yeah, hooked up with God, that's it. We want to be hooked up with God. Not with the system. Okay, so, so everybody, so look at this. Look, 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 look at this. And he say in verse, and, and then again, he says in verse eight, and he says, and you have all things, so, subjected under his feet for in that you put all subjection under him are everybody with me he left nothing that is not put under him nothing look nothing is left y'all see that does it say that whatever you tripping with all that all that all that is under your foot through the word of God Woo! you ain't got to go back there no more it don't have to be two of y'all no more. At church, there's one girl. At home, there's another one. No, the same one. Walking by faith and not by sight. Victory every day. So, but now we do not yet see all things under him. But Jesus, but we see Jesus who have made, was made a little lower than an angel for the suffering of the dead, he was crowned with glory and with honor, and that he be the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. So what he did in tasting death for everyone, man, we don't got to be tripping with all this stuff no more. I said, we don't got to be going through it no more. 
I can make it to one service, but I got to get a break because I can't make it to two because I got to have my drink in between and all that. Uh-uh. Oh, I started having headaches. Anybody ever been on Red Bull? Anybody ever taste Red Bull? Don't lie to me. Some of y'all got some in your person thing. <laughs> Jordan, you, been on, you know what Red Bull is? If you drink enough of Red Bull, that stuff, will, you, you'll be like, it's, it's, it's like high with a caffeine. And if you don't take it for a while, you'll start having like headaches. I, ain't, I, I did that. I, blah, 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 blah. I was taking them because I was too lazy to work out. So I was taking them to get a little start. And you'd be getting heart, your heart be going racing and things. And you're looking. <laughs> you're looking crazy. Is this the big one or something? You know. I'm going like, man. So the day, the day, one day I was traveling out of the country. And I, and I had not realized that I hadn't had no Red Bull. And I got out the car. I said, this is what a crackhead must feel like. <laughs> and I was going like this and just kind of walking. And, the, and the, the, the man that was the ambassador showing me where I was at, he said, now come over here, let me show you these, these things. We own these too. And I was like, I'm catching up. <laughs> I ain't had no Red, not just Red Bull. I could imagine if you want some other stuff. Come on, bro, come on now. Turn it in today. Some of y'all know you need to turn that thing in today. When the altar comes, just go on, just walk up cool. Just lay it on the altar. <laughs> but I paid this much for it. It's better to be free than to hold on to that. Because just like I was doing that Red Bull, you can get into like that drink. I don't, man, I love you. I don't care if you, what you're drinking. I just want you to be healthy. I'm not tripping with no, why? It's not like I got some kind of vendetta against somebody who might be on different type of substances. I just want you to be free. I want you to be straight free. Anything that you got to monitor when you drive, you don't need to be doing it. It's like we're in an epidemic. Everybody listen to me, man. We dealing with some crazy people today, man. Almost said something else. There's some crazy people out there. I, pu I stop at the stop sign and a dude let his windows down and I'm literally just all kind of smoke. I roll mine up real quick. I said, whatever's in there, I don't want none up in here because I might go crazy. I roll it down and I'm just trying to turn my windshield wipers on so I could be able to go. Because I can't even see it so much. Y'all might know what they're doing. Some of y'all might know what they, I don't know what they were doing. All I know, it was just, when I seen green light, I almost burned rubber. <laughs> I'm getting out of the way. Uh-uh. Imagine if that stuff would have got in your, my car. You know, whatever that was, it was so much of it. If it got in the car, it got on you. You would, they would have caught you on a video. He had the pastor at the corner dancing. <laughs> he got out. He got high instant. He got out the car. He was just dancing. <laughs> Let's do a new dance. <laughs> uh uh no. So no, we got to woo. It's a lot going on, and it's like some people something for nothing. You willing to like you over here? Oh, we got some drink. Get me. You don't know what you're drinking. Anytime, you know, you married, your wife don't show up for two days. You know, we got a problem. <laughs> One hour extra. Just blank, blank out for two days. You just off the grid for two days. You goes for two days. That's almost like funeral arrangements or something. <laughs> I mean, just you a wife and you just disappear for two days. Come back, I'm home. Now, some of y'all, are you're so holy and so blessed. Nothing like that would ever cross your mind. Your husband just for two days, he don't show up. <laughs> Duncan already smiling. He said, I already know it's going to be a war when I get to the house. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, somebody said change the locks. He go in his own house, can't even get in. Then two dudes standing and talking about you can't come back. Oh, man. <laughs> Is that TV drama? No, that's real drama. All right, now let's finish now. Let's finish. So everything is under your foot, right? So stop ever thinking that something got you. The main reason Jesus came into this earth realm is to put everything under your foot. So it's like, well, he died for our soul. He died for us, our sins. He died that you could have power, that nobody can control your destiny if you get in this word. Nobody can control your destiny. Nothing is happening to control your destiny. 
you can move forward in whatever endeavor you want. You want to do a business, you can do it. Whatever you want to do, God will elevate you to do it. Do you hear me? That was one of the key reasons he came. So there was a supernatural power that was existing and it was called the, the works of the devil. So here was the work of God. He gave everything to Jesus that he might handle the work of God and make it available for us. We can have long life, peace and everything. Here come the devil. He's going to try to impose on us sickness, disease, all that other stuff. So Jesus said what he did. So when I go down, the first thing I'm going to do is destroy all of his works. Listen, everybody look at me. You got to get along with each other. Amen. You can't make all the decisions. Y'all got to work together. Both a husband and wife, y'all in the house working. Y'all got to work together. It can't be your money, my money. Let's work this together. And you got to be in faith. Don't sit on it when you have an opportunity to make the situation better. Oh, like this, pay your tithes instead of trying to buy some donuts and stuff. You look like you're full of donuts, man. <laughs> this is a man of God right here. But the bottom line is you got to make certain that we do what the words say. Amen? Amen. And we're not each other's enemy. We're here to help each other. Last verse, go to 1 first, first John 2. 1 John 2, go to 1 John 2. What I say? I'm blessed in a blessing. Say, I'm blessed in a blessing. Why do you say that? Because if you don't say I'm blessing a blessing, you're always looking for a blessing. You ain't willing to be a blessing. Now go to 1 John 2. It's a relationship, children. Say hi to people. Be nice to people. Don't be waiting for somebody to say something negative. And, uh -uh. Don't, don't rule out the possibility of something good happening. Uh, I said uh, 1 John, did I say that? 1 John chapter 2 and verse 7. 1 John 2, 7. Watch this. This is important. Everybody say this as I'm concluding. Relationship. Relationship. We, all we all are required, are required. have a relationship with God. Relationship with God. Now stop. If I can't have a relationship with you, I can't have a relationship with him. I love God. He said, if you love God, love your brother. Amen. 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 You all down at the you all down at the at down at the grocery store. You loving everybody. You won't give your husband a hug. That's crazy. If you at the grocery store, you better bring that grocery mentality here. You run around all smiling with all the peepers. Why don't you smile up in here? You get home, you say, I'm just shutting it down. I shut, I got your shut down. <laughs> if you can be loving at the grocery store, bring all that up in here. Bring some loving up in here. Am I right? Amen. I'm willing to. You know, it's like in, in the book of sec, in 1 Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians, he say, I'm willing to give my body to be burned. You ain't got to be burned. Just rub my back. That's all you need. Yeah. <laughs> we ain't got to go that far. Talk about, about, I mean, you know, let's just rub each other's back. Get some water for each other or something. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the, it's relationship. The whole Bible is a book of relationship uh, again and again and again. Let me give you this last thing because y'all are blessed. I said you blessed. You bless, your kids bless, your mama bless, everybody bless. All right, now watch this, watch this. Uh, 1 John 3, 1 John 3, chapter 3 and verse 7. Look what it says. Little children, let no one deceive you. Let no one what? So don't get deceived just trying to quote a verse. He who practice righteousness is? If you practice righteous, you are what? I'm teaching you about righteousness all the time, but you got to practice it. Amen. Just as he is also righteous, Jesus. Got that? He who sin is of the, he who has the nature and practice that nature. Everybody look at me. Before you die, you might sin a half of one more time, at least one more time in your life. And God will forgive you. He says in 1 John 1 and 7, if you confess your faults, he's faithful and just to forgive you. So we always can say, Lord, forgive me. I just tripped out. But, but he who sinned, who practiced it with no remorse is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. Watch this. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. The reason Jesus came, for this reason, the reason Jesus came, for this reason, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That he might destroy the works of the devil devil and so we don't have to be destroying no work we just walk in the word and everybody put everything down I want to pray for you right now put your stuff down we're going to get busy now 
brother man, all you, you listen to me. You want to live on your way. You don't want to make no alterations for God. Everybody listen to me. I remember this. Sometimes people think they come into church for somebody else. You need to be coming for your soul. Because if you about to burn up in the lake of fire, can't nobody save you. All right, think about it. Everybody, look at this. Look at me, Angela. Look at me. Think about this. A lake full of fire. Who want to be caught up with something like that? Your shoes burn up. Your Jerry curl burn up. Everything burn up. Who want to be in a, a, watch this, a lake full of fire? 